Hello, folks. Phil Gallagher of Thraben. You here for another, not legacy video, another popper video. Habits, you know? All right. Today, we are going to be playing with Ryan T's Nameless Arista Beetles deck list. And this is a really neat idea. Um, so, we're going to start with a rules interaction. So, Nested Shampler says when it dies, create X tapped green squirrel creature tokens. And they're one ones where X is this thing's power. So if you increase this thing's power with, say, something like a Bone Splitter, you can get more squirrels, which you can then sacrifice to other things. Uh, we are playing Nameless Inversion as a removal spell in this deck list, okay? The target creature gets plus three, minus three, and loses all creature types until end of turn. Okay, so what happens if we cast this on a Nested Shambler? Well, this thing is going to have less than one toughness, and so it is going to die to state-based effects. And when we check and see its power, we are going to see that it got a buff from Nameless Inversion. So we can use Nameless Inversion on Nested Shambler to go and make four squirrels instead. And if we have something to do with those squirrels, well, then it's going to get cute. So generally speaking, what we're going to try to do here is use powerful sacrifice outlets like Carrion Feeder or maybe Blood Throne Vampire to go and sacrifice creatures. And while we do this, we can use this rare card, which got downshifted to common, crazily. Uh, we can use Mortician Beetle to create a very large creature permanently. And this is the core idea behind this deck list. We are a sacrifice-themed deck list, and there's a lot of fun tech in here. Many of our creatures have uh, an ability that happens when they die, and so we are able to kind of trigger these at will with all of our various sacrifice outlets. So we're going to have like some removal spell or some life gain associated with these creatures dying. And at some point we can essentially use a bunch of creatures on board as a giant death laser. Now once we've made our large creature, we can use a wedding invitation to push them through. Or if we need some card advantage, we can start sacrificing creature with the draw two effects like Village Rites or Deadly Dispute. Now, Deadly Dispute does let you sacrifice an artifact or creature, and that's why we're playing a couple of Vault of Whispers in this deck list when we otherwise don't have artifact-based synergy. Um, one other nice piece of tech here, the original deck list Ryan submitted had Unearth in it, um, but I was chatting with Alex Ullman of the Popper uh, format panel, and he suggested Pit Keeper. When this thing ETBs, if you have four more creature cards in your graveyard, you can return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Um, his reasoning was, if you're just returning a one drop with an unearth, that's not all that mana efficient, right? Like, unearth is at its best when you are returning things with the highest possible CMC. Um, so I, I kind of like the reasoning, and we're going to try out Pit Keeper here. As far as the sideboard, um, kind of decided to pick my battles and I decided I didn't really want to lose to burn so we're gonna have some unexpected fangs to make some very large life linky creatures um, and I'm gonna try out Mukotai Ambusher uh, it's a rat ninja with ninjutsu for two uh, that is a 3-2 lifelinker and since I have so many one drops that effect just feels powerful um, I am really excited to try this out. Um, there's also some really cute tech in here. Um, occasionally in Popper, you run into like these fog decks where like the combat step is locked down. Um, so I can have Rite of Consumption as a way to win that does not involve combat damage. And I've decided to add in a couple of Thorn of the Black Rose here um, so that I can become the monarch in a, like a control matchup where things get really bogged down. Um, I guess kind of a final thing I want to say here is, like, there's a world where I am supposed to splash red while playing this deck because there's another Mortician Beetle effect in red um, that sees play in, like, the Rakdos. I don't want to say version of this deck because I've never seen anyone do this whole, like, Nameless Inversion Nested Shambler thing before. Um, but in a similar style deck, like... The, the Rakdos version has an additional Mortician Beetle effect, uh, which is pretty strong. Anyway, folks, I hope you'll enjoy. If you do, please click the like button. Do it now if you want to be uh, extra helpful. Wouldn't mind that at all. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing if you enjoy the content. If you end up wanting to try this out or get one of your own decks on the channel, that information is available in the video description. Let's battle. All right, unfortunately, my first hand has no lands here, um, so we just have to auto mulligan this without really thinking about it. Um, this hand does not really do anything. 
Uh, I really don't want to go to five in Popper, but like Pit Keeper is not turned on right now. Nameless Inversion doesn't have the right things to pair with it. Village Right doesn't have the right things to pair with it. Um, I, I will go to five here in hopes of finding something more powerful. Um, this will have to be acceptable. Uh, I'm going to keep this. I'm probably going to pitch the Nameless Inversion and... I'm going to assume that I'll find another Sacrifice Outlet. Let's let's pitch this. We can try to be like a Bone Splitter aggro deck for a little while. Okay, we are playing against Tron. An opponent has a pretty reasonable start. I think I'm going to lead on the Shambler here. Suit that up with Bone Splitter and uh, maybe do something cool. Uh, I'm kind of sad that I threw back the Blood Throne Vampire. Like, that that was the draw that, like, very much punish, fuck, uh, punishes me for that. Uh, opponent's going to have just turn three Tron. Uh, so, let's, uh, let's see what I can do here. I'm going to crash in for my points of damage, but opponent could be, like, working with seven damage, or sorry, with seven mana as of their turn three. Um, after my mulligan to five, that's uh, just uh, very, very backbreaking. Um, let's let's see how bad it is. They can't do anything with colored mana this turn, um, but they have the self assembler tech. So self assembler allows you to search for another assembly worker, uh, which means that you can just kind of string like four of these together. All right. Um, if I'm going to win this game, I probably need a Sacrifice Outlet. I'm going to try to cycle immediately and find that. If I find that or a land, I'm happy. All right. Here is a Mortician Beetle. And if I get multiple Mortician Beetles plus, like, a Sack Outlet, like, we're, we're probably good. Because, like, I sack outlet nested shambler, and then all of a sudden I'm, like, very stabilized versus self-assemblers. All right, let's, let's see what opponent has. They didn't have access to colored mana last turn, and they do now, so bad things can happen. All right, and they're, they very much have uh, their mana fixed. All right, um, I am not going to block with this yet, I don't think. I can do more... Profitable blocks later. Uh, I am going to choose to believe. I will believe in my ability to draw a sacrifice outlet and stabilize this board. But uh, situation, maybe not quite dire, but bad. Uh, no. My stuff. Take nine damage here. I don't think I can recover from that. I'm gonna go ahead and concede there. Uh, what a beating. Like, Mulligan into Natural Tron into Sweeper was a rough series of events for me. Um, what do I want as far as sideboarding goes? I mostly want to just, like, not Mulligan into Oblivion and, like, get my thing going. I'm looking to go under my opponent. They're normally not going to assemble Tron quite that quickly. I don't know that I'll actually sideboard. I think Thorn's okay. Unexpected Fangs is not crazy. Duress is not crazy. I just kind of think I can't be duressing my opponent early. I'm going to run back the game one deck here. All right. So I have, multi I have Nested Shambler plus Nameless Inversion plus a Sacrifice Outlet. This is probably going to be good enough to keep. And um, let's see where this goes. I'll need a little bit more than what's in my hand, but, like, I have a Village Rights that I can use. Mortician Beetle would be an awesome draw. Kind of see how this goes. Ugh. Could be in for a repeat of last game. How do I want to play this? Do I want to just Nameless Inversion and make a bunch of squirrels now? I don't think I'm quite ready for that yet. I think I'm going to go ahead and play another one of these. Attack for one, and then Village writes one of these away. I think I'm good with that. I just, I just, ugh, god, it's Natural Tron again. That is, uh, that is devastating. Alright. So, let's take a draw two here. Get a squirrel and start trying to do something interesting. Eh, eh. 
All right. I don't think I'm going to be going bigger than what my opponent is doing here. I think I'm going to start and just like village rights a squirrel and see what my options are. Yeah, absolutely not drawing the right pieces of the package here. I think, I think I'm just going to dig here. And digging did not work. Um, I, I think my opponent is just so much faster than me here. I'm I, like, I've drawn four extra cards with double village rights, but I, I have not made it to something that is truly relevant here. Um, still failing to do so. I can just block and make four squirrels and buy time. I don't think I have to do that whole block thing yet. Um, use my mana efficiently this way, call it a turn, and then hope to draw a sacrifice outlet that I can do something meaningful with. All right, a lot of mana. Um, absolutely willing to just take the four this turn. That's no big deal. Uh, yep, not great for me. And then my opponent can just play another one of those immediately. This is such good tech. I love it. All right, opponent's got 12 power in play. All right, I have a Mortician Beetle. Now, now we're talking. Now I can make something that, like, fucks around with this stuff in combat. So I use two for Nameless Inversion to make a bunch of creatures. I have two mana that I can sacrifice. Yeah, I think I can call it a turn here. I take a lot of damage this turn, and then I'll, large, I'll largely feel good from here, uh, like, assuming my opponent doesn't do something backbreaking. Like, they can fire off a sweeper or something, and, well, no, a sweeper's not actually all that bad. Causes me to take some extra damage, though. I guess there's also a world where I can use Nameless Inversion as, like, a true removal spell on one of these, but I think I just need the raw amount of creatures. So let's jump in the way here. Play Nameless Inversion. Oh, god damn it. No. No. All right. So I will go ahead, sacrifice this for a counter on my beetle. Yield to that. Yes. Get a squirrel. A1 mana. Sacrifice the squirrel, put another counter on the beetle. So my creature survived the fiery cannonade, but now I'm not setting up for like the cool two turn thing that I wanted to do. All right, so opponent takes two, and now I'll take eight in combat damage, and this nameless inversion does nothing, unfortunately. Uh, opponent having natural tron and fiery cannonade two games in a row is pretty brutal. I don't think I'm going to beat just, like, a, str a string of four self-assemblers here. I don't need that much more time to pull ahead and do cool stuff, but I'm just, like, not there now. Okay, there's a stirrings. Finding a sphere, which they can just play out. That's, or if they've got a map, sure. All right. A shambler. I'm not, I'm not dead. That's, that's the good news. So I can, like, place shambler... Play Scorpion. I think I'll Witch's Cottage, another Shambler on top of my deck. I think. Oh, you're not. Nonbo. Okay. Yeah, the, the Vault of Whispers that I added to the deck to make my Deadly Disputes better uh, just kept me from using Witch's Cottage the way that I wanted. Non basic lands are not free. Alright, Stirrings Away. Haunted Fengraph. That's the... Oh, Haunted Fengraph. I was thinking of the six mana green thing. Okay. Sure. That's fine. Oh, that's that's like Fengraph Marauder. Different different card. That's why I was confused. Alright. Casual 16 power coming this way. So I'm always blocking here. Always blocking here. I think I just soak up the damage... So let's do some sacrificing. A1, sacrifice the Shambler. Get my counter on my beetle. Get my squirrel. Drain one. And 
Sacrifice this as well. Turning my Beetle into a 5-5, meaning that it comes out favorably in this combat. And I drain two here. All right. Uh, I wonder if I can kill my opponent next turn. This is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten damage as is. Fucking, fucking stop. Fucking stop. Pay one. Sacrifice the squirrel that's about to die. Uh, that goes up to a 6-6, six, six, but unfortunately it has 4 damage marked on it already. So, I think that's GG. And there's more. Okay. A little surprised to see that. Um, that's obviously good here, because I am playing these artifact lands. Which uh, are not looking so hot right fucking now. Uh, I think uh, I think we're done with this round. What a fucking beating. All right, uh, looking at kind of a mediocre hand here, I don't quite have everything that I might want for a functional hand. I'm trying to figure out if this is enough. Like I have a turn one play, I have a turn two play, I have a turn three play. I'm not doing anything broken. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fish. Um, this is fine. Maybe throw back a shambling ghast and keep the third land? Question mark. Un unsure. Like the third land is pretty nice. Cycling land, yeah. The third land is pretty nice if I do end up finding relevant cards. Okay. We're uh, we're potentially gonna go pretty hard with this hand. Uh, let's get a Carrion Feeder in play. Ooh, okay, so we're probably playing against a Boros um, Experimental Synthesizer deck of some kind. Alright, um, Village Rights is cool. I think I'm just going to play out two creatures this turn, though. And we'll see what my opponent can do. I mean, Squadron Hawk is cool. Like, that's a that's a draw three for my opponent. So I've uh, become less and less impressed by Squadron Hawk over time. Uh, I think... Actually, Village Rights is an instant, isn't it? Yeah. I could go ahead and just attack in with Serrated Scorpion. Feels pretty free for me to do so. Yeah. yeah. Fine. Bunch of 1-2s. Hanging out, having fun. Uh, let's just village rights away that creature, take the damage, try to find something broken to do. Two creatures in my graveyard, pit keeper isn't quite on yet. I think I'm okay with using the rest of this turn, uh, the rest of my mana to nameless inversion. I think I am just going to do that now while my opponent is tapped out and can't like lightning bolt my shit. Let's let's make a bunch of critters. I have I have done a cool thing. So now, Peter, Scorpion, Nested Shambler. So as soon as one more creature is in my graveyard, the Pit Keeper is on. So as of right now, the Unearth is feeling better than the Pit Keeper, but another turn or two down the line, the Pit Keeper will feel better than the Unearth. It will just generate more value. All right, that's fine. Let's do some cycling. Yeah, and try to find something cool to do. And make a gargantuan creature this turn. I don't know. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. There's a carrion feeder. There's another carrion feeder. I think I'm going to go ahead and send in with these squirrels and whichever ones my opponent blocks. I'll uh, sack to carrion feeder. I guess sack to a carrion feeder more accurately. All right. Take three. And we'll see what cool things I can do. Battle Screech is rough. My opponent now can keep up with like the number of creatures that I'm producing or chump block my carrion feeders for a very, very long time. And like they have the evasion in the air that I don't. <laughs> yeah. There's a mortician beetle. That's going to be good. How many creatures do I have in graveyard? Feeder, scorpion, shambler. I can sack a carrion feeder to the other carrion feeder to do some cute things. I think I'm good with that. So let's send in some creatures and see how my opponent treats this. Okay, so there's their blocks. 
I will sacrifice some creatures here. Always yes to this. Always yield to that. Sacrifice again here. All right. We've made some large creatures. Get in for a little bit of damage. Now I have my fourth card in Graveyard. So I can go ahead and play Pit Keeper. I can just return a Nested Shambler for a large number of creatures. Do Sacrifice. I think that's better than a Carrion Feeder. Yes, I'll use that ability. Play Nested Shambler. If opponent can fire off a couple of removal spells on my most relevant creatures, they can potentially... Um, still, wow, that is a lot of attacks. Uh, it feels like I might get fogged then. Uh, cause I sure can't block. Uh, oh, no. Oh, that's bad. And that has flashback. Alright, did I just die from full health? From above full health, actually, at that? I believe I did. Fuck me. Okay. That is a shame, because I was, like, absolutely doing the thing there. All right, um, so a card that I considered for the sideboard but ultimately didn't put in was Suffocating Fumes and definitely feeling the absence of that card here. I probably want Spell Bombs to help deal with, like, Prismatic Strands, Faithless Looting-type shenanigans, Battle Screech. Um, I don't know that I really want to attack my opponent's hands. I think I like the Life Blink. Like, getting a... 4-4 four, four or larger creature so that I'm outside of lightning bolt range and then smacking one of those on it feels pretty good. Thorn's okay, but I don't know that I can hold the Monarch consistently. Um, let's try to board four cards. I really like Plagued Rasalka here. Wedding Invitation probably needs to stay. Am I just the beatdown? Am I trying to like go under what my opponent does and so I should go down some number? of my slower cards, or do I just, like, need that card advantage in response to removal spells? Ambling Ghast is good. I wish I had more of them for this matchup. Maybe my Bloodthorn Vampires are a little risky. Like, opponent just has such good removal and fog-like options. Maybe go down one of those, go down a Pit Keeper, go down, like, one Nameless Inversion or something like that. Okay, I am lacking good creatures to sacrifice, but I think I'm going to just keep a hand that has multiple Mortician Beetles. Like, that card has felt very good so far. Like, I can just play Mortician Beetle into Mortician Beetle and then try to get some, like, Village Rights type stuff going a little bit later. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm going to go ahead and just set up, deploy some cards, call that good. And see where my hand goes. Alright. Now I need to find a good thing to sacrifice. Hey, a good thing to sacrifice. How convenient. I'm going to play a Nested Shambler. I think I'm going to take the time to do this and play this as a tapped land. And then try to really do something impressive next turn. Um, opponent can do some pretty powerful things. We'll see what they have going on. If it's just Hawk and they don't, like, have Lightning Bolts for my Beetles or anything, I'm very good with where this situation is at. Okay, there is a looting. Um, so I will, I will do cool things. Alright, there is a Prismatic Strands. Uh, so if you're not familiar with this one, uh, it is essentially a, a flashback fog. Uh, it, it, it does cool stuff. I think let's start with the obvious place of... Junk this creature. Let's well, always yes and always yields to the beetles. Always yes to the beetle. And Shambler makes me a bunch of tokens. Draw some cards. Hey, I don't mind that spell bomb at all. Do I just play that and nuke my opponent's graveyard now? Or do I just continue to set up further? Next turn, I just play the lamp ad and just absolutely go to town. Given that, I think I'm good with doing something like this. I'll probably use Spell Bomb at the end of my opponent's turn. I don't think I want to attack here. My attacks are just so much better next turn. If opponent were to have something like a Fiery Cannonade, it would be extremely good here. Um, otherwise, next turn's gross. Alright, one of my beetles is going down to a Lightning Bolt. I still have two more. I think I'm okay with that. 
Spectre is fine. And, oh, there's more. Okay, it's just a hawk. That's okay. And we'll see if my opponent chips in for a little bit. They do. All right. And, like, do I want to just spell bomb without drawing a card? Kind of. Maybe I shouldn't give up that value. I don't know. My mana's so tight right now. Yeah, I, I think I will. I, I don't think I need that card right now. I don't think this game is about cards. This game is about murder and death. All right. So do this. And I think swing in with... Mortician beetles and two squirrels. And I will sacrifice the squirrels if my opponent blocks them, uh, which it looks like they are doing. So, junk those creatures. I've already said yes to you. Yes. Always yield. Then junk this creature. And uh, we've, we've got an engine going. I have two creatures in graveyard for the purposes of pit keeper. And I have some very large creatures and some ability to just go to my opponent's dome directly. And oop, oop. All right, I have forced my opponent onto the defensive, which is probably pretty good for me. Um, wedding invitation is cool. Uh, let's just play that, draw my card, see what I can do with it. Plagued Rusalka. Yeah, sure. Drop that into play. Attack with the two beetles. Have a Plagued Rusalka on board trick. I think I'm good with that. All right, that is a large number of creatures in front of one of these. Oh, no, there's, there's a lot of confusion. Okay, opponent is just throwing the team in front here. Um, so I'm going to have a 4-4 four -four creature. Uh, assuming I kill one of these squadron hawks. I can just do something like kill bird bird inspector here. And then kill a squadron hawk disability. Right, choose target creature. Choose you. A1. Sack a squirrel. These are some major losses for my opponent. Oh, absolutely fuck me. Um, okay. That's annoying. That means I lose one of my mortician beetles to that trick. Um, so that's a little rough. Uh, is pit keeper ready? Shambler, beetle, beetle. Uh, it's not immediately ready, but it can be. Um, so that's probably fine. And then let's see what my opponent's follow up is. Lightning bolt on my Rasalka. Okay, so. Hit Keeper is now good to go. And opponent can crack in for a little bit of damage. That's that's okay. So let's go two mana. Hit Keeper. Do I just return the Shambler? Or do I, like, return the Rasalka? Like, if I return Shambler and just start bleeding my opponent with my Lampard, that's pretty good. The Rasalka taking out my opponent's creatures seems... Very nice. So let's go that route. Let's target a squadron hawk here. A1. Just junk the pit keeper. Get that creature out of the way. Throw my Martitian beetle. Uh, I should have equipped Bone Splitter. I just expect my opponent is either chump blocking or fogging, so I'm not actually expecting to get the damage in this turn. Uh, I'm punished for my line. All right, opponent goes to six. And I think I'll just hold up Sacrificing. I don't think I'm going to Sacrifice. I think I want to hold up that mana. Maybe I didn't make a mistake. It was like holding up Plague Resolve to sacrifice it to itself for if things get weird is reasonable. Yeah, crack your glue. A looting is fine. My opponent finding more strands or like Battle Screech or something would be significantly less fine. Multiple Rally the Peasants. Okay. Do I just sacrifice a Rasalka here? Because, like, every point of damage matters when my opponent has this much on flashback. I think I'll uh, see if they fire off anything. Maybe I, maybe I, like, accept this. Because there's worlds where I can just top deck a Nested Shambler 
equip nested shambler and then just like try to drain my opponent out in ways that don't involve the combat step. Yeah, I'll I'll take that damage. That's a deadly dispute. I'll sacrifice the land here. All right, goodbye vault. There's a spell bomb. That's really fucking good. Absolutely. Uh, so I'll play that. I'll crack that immediately and force the Prismatic Strands activation. So I'll pay my one. My opponent will cast Strands in response. Yeah. But more importantly, I just get those Rally the Peasants out of the graveyard. Yeah, you can you can cast that for sure. I am looking to nuke those things. But now next turn, I can just like Wedding Invitation, make this unblockable and attempt to kill my opponent. My opponent has two cards left. Let's bone splitter on the beetle call to turn. All right, um, inspector is fine. My opponent can get a redraw off of that. I assume they're immediately cracking that clue. Yep. What do you have for me? Yeah, I'll take that damage. A carrion feeder. I don't think I'll play that pre-combat. All right, my mortician beetle is unblockable. Well, let's see if my opponent is dead. No, they have a Prismatic Strands that buys them two more turns. Alright. That is unfortunate. I will play a Carrion Feeder. Uh, if I just drop, top deck another Nested Shambler, my opponent will die. Um, I believe I technically should have moved Bone Splitter here. Um, for what that's worth. I think my opponent's got this one. Like, this, this is just so many creatures. Like, Prismatic Strands aside, that's just so many chump blocks. Um, I think I just have to, like, take this damage and try to bleed my opponent out directly uh, without using the combat step. Uh, that is a Nested Shambler. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, let's move the Bone Splitter there. Just sacrifice this now. Do my thing. And start bleeding my opponent. One... Two, three, and I'm going to pass the turn here, I think. I have to, like, dodge or rally the peasants type effect. If I attack, all of these things have to be blocked. Does that do anything special here? Like, I attack with you, that's fine. All of these have to be blocked. Or my opponent has to cast Prismatic Strands. No, so I'll just, I'll just take one body or a Prismatic Strands. Alright, that's fine. So now I just need to dodge a removal spell on my Lampad. Ooh, did not dodge. That is unfortunate. Guess I'll just sacrifice it to itself. Uh, I didn't math it out, but I wonder if I lost... Like, I wonder if I could have killed my opponent by not equipping Bone Splitter. Didn't count carefully. My brain is kind of mush. <laughs> taking six here. Now I'm taking five here. Uh, sure, that's fine. Holy shit. Um, that's really good. It forces Prismatic Strands this turn. Alright, let's do it. Equip the Bone Splitter as well, just on the off chance that my opponent does not fog. I think they fog. Uh, bash on in. There's a block. And I presume Strands. Or Strands. Alright, um... Opponent can top deck like a Rally the Peasants and kill me. Uh, Battle Screech is fine. It's good. Alright, there's the flashback battle screech. I assume my opponent will just continue to pressure my life total. Um, do I go after these hawks? If I'm going to go after them, now is the time to go after them. Let's do it. Dunk the carrion feeder. Kill one. Uh, maybe I don't sacrifice this thing, though, so I still have a sacrifice outlet on board. Yeah, for that reason. Alright. There's Nested Shambler. Move Bone Splitter to it. Plague Rasalka. Target one of those. A1. Sacrifice Nested Shambler. Make a very, very dumb Mortician Beetle. Uh, and now I can just continue to go after my opponent's uh, active blockers. I think at this point, I'll just take my points of damage. Bash in for 17 lifelink. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, there's a concession. 
Uh, although, to be honest, I don't think my opponent should have conceded. I'm using so much more time as I'm trying to figure out all the lines of this deck. Um, I need to win quickly this game. I mean, I play Duress. I mean, I play Rite of Consumption. Maybe I play Rite of Consumption. And, like, bring the Bloodthorn blood throne vampires back in just like go down some amount of end game card advantage i don't know that this is necessarily the correct way to board for the matchup but it's the correct way to board for the situation that i'm in um no yes uh keep this junko scorpion i guess i don't really get a lot of uh time to think about what i'm doing here all right, um, land drop, beetle go. Um, again, I could really think about, like, which one of these things is correct to play into Lightning Bolt if I wanted. Um, but I don't really have a lot of time to do that. But I think I like this little combo being up. All right, opponent's got another land. God, multiple prismatic strands is rough. I guess that's what Spell Bomb is for, right? Um, I'm just going to play that and nuke my opponent's graveyard immediately. Yeah, you can you can flash back one of those. That's fine. Uh, yes, I'll pay. Junk your graveyard. Play Vault. Play Shambler. Pass the turn. I hate that I can't F6 because I have relevant lines to do. Like, I just have to be able to play um, things in response to Lightning Bolts. Uh, yeah, Thrilling Discovery is fine. Uh, Remote and Rally, sure. That's fine. On its incidental life gain from this is going to be a little annoying. Okay, another Nested Shambler. A bit much. Uh, play this. Play this. Go to combat. Attack all. I will block one of those. At which point I will do this whole... Sacrifice, Song, and Dance. I think I will go ahead and sacrifice this one as well immediately. All right, opponent's at 19. I have a lot of onboard power, but my opponent has um, powerful cards that can swing the game pretty quickly. All right. I'm going to Mortician Beetle or something. All right. Sacrifice a Nested Shambler so that I live through Lightning Bolt. Felt sloppy on my opponent's end. All right, a village rights. Um, sure. I think I'm just going to do that pre-combat. Rain with serrated scorpion. But I draw. Um, bone splitter is cool. Gives me some diversity here. I'll swing with both of these creatures and see what my opponent wants to do about it. Nothing is the answer. Fantastic. All right, electricery. Uh, not great for me. Um, I will be down to one very large creature. My play Grisalka is not looking great versus board. Right, I'll take my two. That's fine. Um, get a Bone Splitter equipped. I'm going to just play some things pre-combat. I have to bash in for nine, which I'm guessing my opponent just blocks. Nope. That's fine. Move this equipment. Opponent's at two. I have two lethal threats that have to be blocked. And that's not great for me. Uh, opponent goes to four. Liter literally doubling their life total. And then more so with the flashback. Uh, okay. Blood Throne Vampire is cool. This here. Bash in. This is, this is just the abyss. My opponent has to block that every turn. That's fine. See what my opponent can do. Um, at some point, I've really got to just kind of accept that I can't keep moving my Bone Splitter around in terms of clock. I'll go ahead and just take that damage. Um, I'm probably going to lose the game to another Prismatic Strands. I think I'm good with that. Move this to Blood Throne Vampire. Bash in for some damage. See what my opponent does. Or one toughness. Yeah. I'll sacrifice the Scorpion there, which is worth two damage. Lightning bolt that creature. Okay, that's fine. I accept. Okay, and they're just going to morph that into the other side. That's okay. Block's a concern. My opponent has a bunch of blockers, and I can't easily get rid of their stuff. Um, 
with the Rasalka. I think I'm just going to start F6ing my opponent's turns. Alright. Um, let's equip this here. I think I'm willing to just trade that thing for a token. I just need to get every possible body out of the way here. That's fine. Re-equip Bone Splitter. Call it a turn. See what my opponent can do. Oh, that thing's annoying. Yep. So I might get just tempoed out by the random life gain that my opponent has off of that stuff. Um, that's cool. Play that out. Crash in. Promote another chump block. I've got a two damage death laser ready, and hopefully I can turn that into more. Um, I don't think I get to F6 like that. Like sacrificing this creature for points of life like absolutely matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take three more in the air here, or something approximating that. We'll see. Okay, why not just not attacking? Just planning on winning via timeout. That's totally fine. Play this. Crash in with this creature. Force my opponent to do the chump block. Right, chump block with the bird is fine. Yield to those triggers. This is uh, just annoying in terms of the amount of life that my opponent can gain here. I think there's a lot of worlds where the amount of life that my opponent is now gaining is just great enough that block aside, they might just win. Every, every creature leaving is just netting them life. All right. Land not really doing it for me here. Uh, I think I'm just going to die in two turns. My opponent just like gets two life every one of these turn cycles when they chump block, whereas I'm losing, you know, four-ish in the air. Oh, okay. That's just everything coming in. They have a prismatic strands. That's uh, just it for me. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. Yeah. All right. Uh, clock aside, they just got it. Um, GGs. All right. Not super happy with how I played the last round. Um, I have slept since then. I have kind of refreshed. One of those lands they play in the flex slots of Tron. I think so. All right. Let's kind of get things started here. Um, which is cottage is going to be a little bit awkward for me. Um, and if we're playing against Tron, I think I'm gonna have a hard time aggroing them out due to this like ETV tapped land if they just like assemble Tron quickly. But if they keep drawing all the flex lands, like there's absolutely hope for me. I'm always playing this. I play carrion feeder this turn. Next turn, I can go Bone Splitter, equip, bash in for a bunch, then do a sacrifice and have a very large carrion feeder the following turn. That sounds fine to me. Let's take my little poke here and go from there. All right, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is not Tron. Like, this is many turns in a row of not hitting a Tron land. All right, um... Do I want to try the nameless inversion shenanigans? I don't know. I don't know what I'm playing against. So I don't know whether or not I need to like hold that up for blocking purposes or whether it's fine to just go bone splitter equip. I like the idea of playing bone splitter because oh yeah, no, this is still a blue land. Uh because if my opponent just plays like a fairy, like a spell starter sprite or something, I can still make another play. Nope, okay. We're just good. Um, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and take my four damage and see what my opponent does. And then at any point where I feel danger, I can go ahead and sack. Oh, no. Okay. It is. It is Tron. They are just off to a slow start. Oh, baby. I like that. Right. There is a Mortician Beetle. I will definitely be sacking out next turn. I don't think I have to do it now. Uh, let's go ahead and crash in. Take that damage. There's a world where I want to play Village Rights and sacrifice this right now, trying to hit another land drop and another card that matters. But I like there's a lot of worlds where my opponent has like counter spells or something, so I don't think I'm gonna do that. It's gonna be yeah, this is a mystical teachings. Alright, getting a fog effect. Not bad. Do I want a village rights here? I don't think I need to. Opponent opponent not great at drawing the Tron lands. Alright. That's a little annoying. That's like at least three turns of safety. Um, given that, it's probably time to go ahead and village rights this sucker. Always yes to Mortician Beetle. Always yield. Always yield to that. 
draw some cards. Hey, it's a win condition that does not involve the combat step. Uh, so that is really nice. So I want to play this now. There's also a world where I want to play like play Grisalka and try to set up play Grisalka plus nameless inversion to kill this if my opponent starts blanking it. Yeah, let's let's play out the bodies here and then call it a turn. Like, I, have, I have seven creatures in play in terms of amount of damage that I can do to opponent. And this is worth another three. So even without the combat step, I'm actually relatively close to killing my opponent. It Oracle is fine. All right, I imagine that'll be it for my opponent's turn. Okay, cool, cool. There's also worlds where, like, my opponent just, like, chump blocks at the Stonehorn Dignitary, and then I can Nameless Inversion it to kill it. But Fog probably just happens. So I'm going to play a Serrated Scorpion. I just, like, very actively want that thing to... Like, I want to sacrifice that and drain my opponent with it very actively. Then I think I'm going to go ahead and attack in with the Beetle. I want to be sacrificing things to this, not to carry and feeder. So let's just send that in. And I'm leaving up my mana rather than equipping Bone Splitter here. Okay, there are no blocks, and now I play this game of how many times will I actually get to activate this Beetle before my opponent fogs. Yield with some stuff here. And uh, work on bleeding my opponent out. I think I'm going to give them the priority pass here. Okay, they just took it. Um, them taking that means that, like, they're just going to be dead to this activating on my next turn. So they must have an answer to something. Or the ability to gain some life. I guess, like, that's legit, too. Uh, Signet is fine. Yeah, that's, a, that's a concession. Um, that game felt weird to me. I don't know... I don't know why my opponent didn't fog. Also a little unsure why they kept the opening hand. It may have just been like, I have lands and spells, it's fine. All right. Um, do I have other things that let me gain non-combat advantages here? Thorns reasonable. Spell bombs reasonable for flashback on the fog effect. Uh, so it's right of consumption for that reason. So those are going to be things that I'm thinking about figure out what i want to board out opponent has some number of blockers i don't know that i need wedding invitation though like i feel like the problem with combat is not the chump blocking it's the fog effects uh let's go down on those i don't know that i need plagued rasulka here like my opponent is going to have creatures with relatively large butts that seems like it can go Probably go down a nameless inversion. It's not going to kill all of my opponent's things that they want to chump block with. And then what I want from here. I can probably go down a pit keeper if I'm bringing in Thorn of the Black Rose. They're similar card advantage things. From here, a lot of the stuff looks reasonable. But I do think I want all of this stuff. Maybe I just go down like one Bloodthrown Vampire or something because it's a little riskier in the face of fog effects. Okay. I think I keep this hand. I just treat this as a bone splitter aggro hand that has the possibility of drawing a bunch of cards with the monarch later. That, that's what this hand is. Um, yeah. So uh, we'll we'll see how it goes. All right, opponent actually has some Tron lands this time and a little bit of mana ramp. Ooh. Play mortician beetle nested shambler this. Well. Yeah, opponent doesn't have access to, like, red for a sweeper yet. I can play, like, Mortician Beetle Bone Splitter this turn. And go Nested Shambler, Equip, Village Rights. That seems pretty powerful. Let's do that rather than play three creatures to the board. And end up in a situation where my opponent playing... Uh, not Fiery Confluence. Uh, the three-mana red sweeper that sees a lot of play in this format. When they play that card, I don't want to just eat it. Ooh, that's really good, too. All right. Shambler, equip it with Bone Splitter. I think I will play the Carrion Feeder rather than the Village Rites. The, uh, yeah. All right, Sacrifice Nested Shambler. Always yes, always yield. Always yes. They're always yielding to that, yes. Always yield to that, always yield to that. 
Now, let's swing in. I think I just go ahead and grow these. I want to get a little bit better value out of their fog, but like this is just so much damage if they don't fog. Yeah, that's that's fine. And I'm set up to play like Thorn of the Black Rose in the not too distant future. And any turn where my opponent does not do a fog effect is going to be disastrous. Yeah, your your dignitary is fine. All right, this is exactly what I wanted. So like, now I'm the monarch. I'm going to draw extra cards. And, like, my opponent is in a lot of danger in terms of me riding this card advantage wave past the point that their fogs can keep up. Yeah, yeah that's just their turn. Um, I want to village rights now. I don't really need to village rights now. Throw a bones litter here, maybe. And crash in for some amount of damage. I don't know that I'm going to swing out fully. I think swinging with two creatures is enough to get the fog effect to go off. I'm wrong. I mean, I'll, I'll take the damage. That's fine. Play a beetle. And uh, draw some cards. All right, there's a Mystical Teachings. Or an Ephemerate. Can't currently break that up. Not too far away from breaking it up, but I'm not there yet. All right, that occurs. Follow-up is just evoking a Moldrifter. That's fine. Oh, that is, that is wonderful. That means I get more counters every time my opponent evokes one of those. So end of turn, I think I will go ahead and village rights away the thorn. Like the monarch thing uh, absolutely just sticks around. All right. Uh, let's cycle this. Got to find some way to deal the last few points of damage. That'll do. That'll absolutely do. Play Serrated Scorpion. Play the Lamp Ad. Sacrifice the Serrated Scorpion. Always yes to this beetle. Always yes to these things. I'll play Witch's Cottage. Put a Serrated Scorpion back on top of my deck. I absolutely use that ability. My combat phase here completely gets skipped. I'll draw a card for the Monarch. There's my Serrated Scorpion again. So my opponent could keep me off my combat steps, but uh, unless they answer my lamp ad, uh, they are just going to be, be dead to me, draining them out. All right, crop rotation is fine. So there's Tron. This is the first time my opponent has assembled Tron in this match. So they can presumably flash back Mystical Teachings, and I would just have another in hand, try to do something cool with it. The Pulse of Marasa. That's worth six life. Returning a Moldrifter. Absolutely. All right. So, let's do some work. So, play a Serrated Scorpion. I will, uh, well, actually, am I on a Deadly Dispute? Maybe I Deadly Dispute and sacrifice either Vault of Whispers or Bone Splitter. Yeah, let's actually do that. I think I'm past the point of needing Bone Splitter, right? Like, I have just plenty of damage here. Yeah. So let's pay one, sack the Scorpion, and bleed my opponent out, drawing the crew here. I'll play a Shambling Ghast, and then at that point, I think I'll just leave up the mana. Draw my card at end step. Yeah, I've, uh, I've, I've got some options here. This is six creatures in play, just by the way. All right, you can return an instant or sorcery. Sure, so that can return the pulse, which is annoying. Oh, it's gonna, okay, sure, uh, return the ephemerate instead. Yeah, that's reasonable. They are ephemerating Stonehorn Dignitary. That's fine. You can make me skip combat. Your Muldrifter is fine. You can draw your two, but uh, you're probably dead in this turn cycle. Let's go ahead and sacrifice this Shambling Ghast. Let's go ahead and kill the Ardent Elementalist with this trigger, so my opponent can't blink that and return Pulse of Marasa. And uh, that should do it. So there's a Serrated Scorpion. Pay my one. Sacrifice it. And uh, yeah, that'll, uh, 
that'll pretty much do it. This is just colorless mana. There's no way my opponent is not dead. Uh, so I'll sacrifice a beetle. I'll sacrifice a carrion feeder. And I'll sacrifice one other card. Okay, that is that is what I came here to do. Um, one thing I'm noticing in my rounds, though, is um, this deck, like, absolutely eats, eats clock like mad. You have a lot of triggers. You have a lot of things going on. Um, like, as, as the sides of these Mortician Beetles indicate, like, when you're doing your thing, uh, it's, like, absolutely good. But um, I think in your first couple leagues playing with this while you're kind of figuring out all the lines and doing combat math and stuff, it's going to eat a lot of brain power. All right, um, this is round four. Or I think I'm going to keep this opening hand. Like, I have a beetle and a sacrifice outlet, and all I have to do is draw a creature that I would like to sacrifice. I think that's going to be fine. I'm still getting a feel for, like, what is acceptable in terms of opening hands with this deck. Because, like, you're frequently going to be missing pieces since, like, you're looking for lands, a thing to sacrifice, a sacrifice outlet and like maybe a mortician beetle too like your your opening hands are asking for a lot and i think i have to accept that i'm not always going to just like innately have everything that i want in an opening hand with this deck let's okay yeah it was pretty reasonable to assume that my opponent was on fairies after seeing the like island in a preordain but it's not 100 percent all right I guess, like, my big question is going to be, like, am I just going to hold up a nameless inversion? I don't think so here, like, given this draw. I think I'm going to go ahead and floop the Nested Shambler into play. Just immediately village writes it. I can take this, take that, draw my cards, crash in for some initial damage, and then, like, if my opponent plays a ninja this turn, I can just name it, nameless inversion killing it. Ooh, fine. Very good for my opponent. It's especially good if they can follow up with a ninja. All right. Is it ninja, or is my opponent just going to hold up something like a spell, spell strutter sprite? All right. It is a ninja. So I, I will nameless inversion that. Um, and I hope not to get spell pierced. But I'll probably play Nameless Inversion. Oh, okay, well, that's that. That was top, top, by the way. All right. Let's take out the hacker. I'll crash in for one. And I think I want to get the Bone Splitter into play around Sprite. This just increases my damage output, output quite a bit. Um, let's see if my opponent has another ninja. Some of the fairies builds only play the four ninja of the deep hours, but it seems like uh, my opponent has gone deeper than that. So they can have up to eight ninja effects, so I should not be surprised when my opponent has more. All right. So they're coming out on the right side of card advantage here. I've got some village rights. Like, I have some cool things to do. Um, let's Let's start with combat, though. Let's see if I get my three points of damage in. I do. Now it gets a little trickier from here in terms of like whether or not I hold up village rights mana. I think I do hold that up. My opponent's thinking. As resolved. Um, yeah, I'm just going to hold up village rights for a removal spell here. Frantic inventory, absolutely. I also probably just block hacker in combat if my opponent attacks with it. All right, yeah, they're they're coming in. I'll accept that trade. Yeah, I th I think I'm fine with that. I would like to get an engine going. That's that's what I would like to get. Like I would like to get a scaling mortician beetle or something like that. I think once I have like a mortician beetle or a carrion feeder that is outside of range of lightning bolt, my combat options become a lot better. Okay, so. I am fine trading a squirrel or a fairy seer if opponent wants to go that route. Opponent does not want to go that route. Happily take that damage. I think I'm going to play this vampire first and offer this up to a counter spell. 
Okay, that has happened. Now I'll offer this up. I'm trying to save this as like my surprise burn card in hand for later in the game. All right, yeah, there's there's the sprite. So that will go ahead and counter my thing. And uh, we'll just kind of wait on this village rights for the next time a lightning bolt gets pointed at my creature. I'm not in a rush to end this game. I think my opponent is currently favored. Like they have things like frantic inventory that are building up. Like they have ninjas that they can play that I can't uh, kind of innately deal with here. Yeah, but I, I forced them on the defensive, which is good for me. That's an okay draw. I think I'm fine trading creatures for creatures here. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and ship these in. Like, with two more sacrifice outlets in hand, I don't actually care about this vampire all that much. There's a lightning bolt. So this will be my uh, opportunity to fire off the village rights. I hope doesn't get countered. Yeah. All right. Okay, now, now opponent is willing to make the trade. So... Go ahead and throw a pair of creatures in play while spell starter sprites and counter spells are down. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm all in on board. I have the stronger board presence, but my opponent has more cards in hand and an easier route towards card advantage than I do. Um, I'd like to draw a nested shambler. That would probably be one of my best draws on this board. Or I guess, what is it, the, the pit fiend that could get it back? All right, that's fine. Lampad will rumble as a 3-3 in combat. That's pretty reasonable. See if my opponent has a ninja. They do. All right, there is a ninja of the deep hours. And this is what I mean about my opponent having an easier access to card advantage than I do. All right. My opponent has returned a sprite to hand, um, which is unfortunate because that just means this gets countered if I play it. So I guess, uh, like, I can hold this back and try to, like, wall the ninja. But then I, was, I will still just be taking damage in the air. Uh, but I don't know that I can just let my opponent draw cards willy-nilly. I think I'm going to use my mana to move this bone splitter around. And hope that I can stall the board for a little while. Like, if I get in a decent number of damage before my opponent starts trading off bodies... Okay, now they're trading off bodies immediately. Weakens the spell starter sprite, which is nice. Um, it still just would counter my mortician beetle this turn, so I'm not going to directly play it out into that. You can try to get a couple spells and fire them all off in the same turn. But please don't have a third lightning bolt. Fuck. All right. Yes, I will sacrifice this to its own ability, unfortunately. Um, I think this is probably the point where I've lost. Because, like, now I have no board presence. My opponent has at least one known counter spell. And, uh, like, the ninjas are just going to get to do their things unmolested. Um, oh, this is, this is gross, but I probably have to do this. So that just offers this up to the flyer. And so this gets countered. And I will attempt another creature that I can equip Bone Splitter to. Um, to keep the ninja from getting in. This frantic inventory, yeah. Yeah, this this was the worry here. Oh, God, was that a scred? The scred, all right. Um, I think at this point I'm, I'm comfortable conceding this one's far enough gone at this point. Um, so one of the things that I was considering for my sideboard that didn't actually make it into the sideboard was suffocating fumes. Uh, and that's not here, which is kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, so what's my approach to this matchup? I don't really have more removal in the sideboard. I can become more threat dense. I can play this monarch game if I want to, but I think my opponent is too good at taking it back. I could play these to mess with the tempo aspect. I can play these to mess with frantic inventories. I can play these to mess with the tempo aspect. I don't know that I want to duress. I don't think I need wedding invitation. I think. In a lot of cases where I'm doing my thing fully, I, I will whittle down my opponent's resources fast enough that I'm okay. Like, I, I need to just get my creatures out of, like, Lightning Bolt slash Scred range. And if I accomplish that, I think I'm good. I wish I had more Plagued Rasalkas for this matchup. I think I'm going to go down a couple of Blood Throne Vampires. 
that's going to get me these unexpected fangs and one of these other cards, and then I might keep most of the rest of the stuff that's here. Might want to play Blood Fountain to just help with grinding. Like, returning some of these creatures after removal spells feels pretty good. I don't know that I want to play a spell bomb for one card that my opponent has to draw multiple copies of before I feel like it's good. Maybe I just kind of round things out, play one of these. I don't know, like maybe the 3 2 lifelinker that just dies to lightning bolt and spread. I'm gonna do what I want it to, but gaining a little bit of life can take pressure off. I'll, I'll play one. Okay. This is a fine hand that is lacking a sacrifice outlet. I think overall I am okay with that. I think I am just going to lead on Serrated Scorpion rather than Mortician Beetle. And uh, see where this hand goes. It's going to be so bad versus an Electricery, holy shit. Like, ridiculously bad. But uh, I think I have to play my cards in hopes of drawing a Sacrifice Outlet and just like going ham next turn. All right, opponent did not take any primary actions there. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have a lot of things in play that don't quite do the things that I want them to do. Um, I guess that's okay. And this is kind of what I'm talking about in terms of, like, all the pieces not quite coming together. All right, opponent's at 16. I don't think I'm willing to play out the Pit Keeper as a 2-1 aggro creature. Uh, let's attempt Blood Fountain and see if that gets countered. All right, it does. Uh, I'll, I'll play out an Essence Shambler. Uh, again, really need a Sacrifice Outlet. And really need opponent to not have Electricery or an equivalent card. Alright, there's another land drop. Um, we'll, uh, see what happens here. Is it ninja time? It is indeed ninja time. You can take your card. Alright. So... I think, unfortunately, I'm in the position where this is just, like, a send -em situation. And I, like, have to just trade a Mortician Beetle with a Flash creature if my opponent wants to do that. Right. Uh, so I know my opponent has Sprite, so I can't actually play this uncounterably. I might just need to play this as an aggro creature. Um, this, this hand is not doing what I, like, wanted the deck to do. But I guess that's fine. I guess there's also a world where I leave back Nested Shambler as a blocker for Moon Circuit Hacker. But as of right now, it feels to me like this is, a, this is a tempo game and I'm on the right side of the tempo. Okay, that is Cycling and Ash Barons to shuffle for the Brainstorm. The, uh, the perfect Brainstorm for the Legacy folks where you like Brainstorm and it feels like a draw three. Is the Moon Circuit Hacker coming in? Nope. All right, we've forced opponent on the defensive, which is good. All right, come on, Sacrifice Outlet. Not a Sacrifice Outlet. Uh, Shove. I really, I really hate, would hate to lose both Mortician Beetles in combat to just, like, block plus Spell Strutter block, but uh, it, it feels like I am on Shove. His opponent has seven cards in hand. The longer this game goes, the easier it is for them to just bury me in cards. Oh, that's wild to me. Versus, oh, I, I guess they don't want to get messed up by a mid-combat trick. Okay. Guess that's reasonable. Um, let's play a Nested Shambler and let my opponent counter that and then try to resolve a Serrated Scorpion. Yeah, this sprite is fine. I'm trying to resolve these Scorpions because, like, their die trigger is worth a lot here. Just hoping my opponent doesn't have, like, a counter spell or a second sprite as follow-up. They do, they do, and I'm just, like, paving the way for a Sacrifice Outlet to be good. But hoping to resolve things here. All right, are, are these coming in? Or, nope, we're in full-on defensive territory. Oh, it's waiting to pay costs on something. Nope, okay. That's not great for me. I'm just going to hold that. And I don't think I'm willing to trade Mortician Beetles for Sprites here. I think I'm going to hold those back. Like the Serrated Scorpion looks better in combat, and so does the Nested Shambler. I think I'm going to try to force trades with those creatures. Okay, that's a Scred, which is still worth damage to my opponent. 
see if the nested shambler gets in there. All right, opponent's at five. Echoing truth, absolutely. So that gives my opponent a chance to counter some of these on the way back down. Oh, we got big mana for something. Ooh. My, my opponent becoming the monarch is, like, very scary as a follow-up play to bouncing these beetles. Yeah, an opponent leaving back an extra creature is probably wise. All right, um, situation is probably dire, I'd say. All right, um, so let's kind of bait with Mortician Beetle. See if my opponent counters that. Nope. Bait with a second Mortician Beetle. Opponent did counter that. So let's... I, I think we do go ahead and just Nameless Inversion this to kill this. That feels important to me. And then we force the trade for Spellstarter Sprite for Nested Shambler, or I become the Monarch, which I don't think my opponent wants. Yeah. Uh, but opponent's very favored here. So, like, the other line I could have taken this turn is, like, Nested Shambler make four creatures, four squirrels, and, like, go wide and take the Monarch, which is reasonable. All right, there's a Scred. And now, now opponent just can, like, hold the ground. Oh, okay, they've got another creature or another removal spell. That's unfortunate for me. Yeah, and they can just uh, keep drawing cards off the Monarch, and I don't think I win from here in most cases. Absolutely F. Um, I'll... Uh, I, I mean, I guess... Like, I'm ahead in terms of life total, but I'm so just absolutely woefully behind in terms of card advantage here. Uh, yeah, and that uh, absolutely is not helping. I think in a lot of worlds, I'm going to have to do five direct damage to my opponent. I don't really expect to get in the red zone for much of the rest of this game. All right. I think if my opponent, like, picks up a ninja as well, I'll be at the point where I'm ready to concede. Like, with Monarch, there are there are times where you can, like, hit a couple of blanks in a row, but I think once my opponent is, like, Netting two additional cards each turn. That's the point where I'm just like, okay, we're we're dead. All right, go little scorpion. Eh. Yeah, this is this is the problem, right? So we we never kind of like drew the sack outlet that I needed to pop off and make it so that like the screds and lightning bolts wouldn't have killed my multiple mortician beetles. And that, like now I'm kind of like paying the price for that, right? If I if I had drawn something that let me get a couple of counters on the the beetles, I think we we win this game pretty easily. But now like my opponent is clearly in the driver's seat, and I can't really do anything about that. Uh, and like my my draw twos aren't draw twos without something else resolved, which is another issue. Yeah, that's exactly it, right? All right, let's uh. Let, let's pack it in. GG's. All right, um, final round. I think I'll keep my opening hand here. We can get pretty aggressive with a Bloodthrown Vampire and Nested Shambler along with Bone Splitter. Um, and we've, we've, got, we've got a good mix of tools here, and I like that. I'm, oh, are we playing against Elves? Oh, we're playing against Elves. Uh, we might not goldfish quickly enough to deal with this shit. Uh, elves is incredibly powerful when you do not have removal spells. Um, one is also just going to generate so many blockers. Um, I'm going to try to just get some damage in and uh, hope everything's okay. Not, not playing Fumes in the sideboard uh, feels like a massive mistake after getting paired against the decks that I'm getting paired against here. Okay, that's not bad. That is a very large scaling threat that will work well with the Bloodthrown Vampire. I like that. So I think I'm going to go ahead and bash in for my three points of damage. I'll play the Vampire. And then next turn, next turn we've got damage. Okay. There's bouncing a land to get to the third land drop. Fender, add X mana in any combination. Okay, so that's that's a mana dork. Oh, we might not be playing against elves. We might be playing against some sort of like walls deck. Okay, cool. Let's play a Mortician Beetle. Let's play a Serrated Scorpion. Attack with both of these creatures and see what my opponent does in terms of blocks. 
No blocks. Well, it is time. Let's put some triggers on the stack. Always yes to this. Always yes to this. Always yield to that. Get a bunch of creatures. Always yield to that. Let the pain continue. Let's absolutely just, like, grow my creatures. Get as much damage as I can in here. And uh, also just shoot my opponent with the scorpion. Uh, so that's 11. Hold on. Is my opponent fucking dead? My opponent's fucking dead, right? That's 11. Uh, plus that. 13. Absolutely. Absolutely. Woo! Onboard combat tricks OP. Wow. Okay. So I don't actually know what my opponent's deck is doing. I know there is a walls deck. I know it plays a bunch of creatures with defender. And you can tap for a bunch of mana and then funnel that mana into something. I don't know the specifics. Wow, which makes it very hard for me to sideboard. I probably need to look at this deck list. Okay, quick Google. It looks like they're using Overgrown Battlement and Axebane Defender to get a large amount of mana. And then you ultimately want to funnel it into something like a Valakut Invoker. And you use like Winding Ways and Lead the Stampedes in order to, like, gain card advantage. Uh, so it looks like there's an absolute crazy amount of stuff. Uh, I, okay, I guess you can also get a venture into the dungeon kill if you go, like, infinite mana. Okay, yeah, so there's an infinite mana combo with Galvanic Alchemist. So yeah, an Axebane Guardian that's producing at least four mana goes infinite with Galvanic Alchemist or freed from the real. I probably don't want duress. This is just overwhelmingly creatures. I might want to become the monarch. And there's a world where I play unexpected fangs to just create very large creatures and make it a real hindrance for my opponent to actually kill me. And like play towards a timeout from very, very, very early on. Um, that's a reasonable. Plague Rasalka doesn't look good. Um, Gambling Ghast doesn't look good. Got two of these. I probably don't need Pit Keepers. I've never played against this deck since I started playing Popper again. Um, I, I need another mana source here. Uh, what did I just say? What did I just say? All again. All right. Put back one of these for sure. Then, in, like, with the Thorn of the Black Rose, that's tough. I think I'm going to put back the land and keep this possible. It's better to keep three lands and just play towards the thorn being good quickly. Um, go land drop into beetle. Um, but I think I'm going to get stalled in the early game here. Yeah. I'm going to have to assemble something reasonable. All right. I can play a carrion feeder. I can play a nested shambler. I think I'm fine with just uh, doing this immediately. I don't know what I need to be playing around in terms of, like, removal colors and whatnot. So I th think I'm just going to do this now. I've got two 3-3 three, three creatures. I will go ahead and attack in and threaten to sacrifice the carrion feeder to itself. I don't think I want to go through with that, but I might get three points of damage in for going for the attack. Yes, I did. Nice. So we'll see how crazy this gets. All right, my opponent was sitting there thinking about something for a good amount of time. I don't know if they have like some sort of lightning bolt esque. I don't know. I guess it... no, they can't have anything else. All right. I'll go ahead and play out a carrion feeder and crash on in. Oh, wow. Opponent is uh, actually taking some chumps. That's fine. I don't think I want to grow this creature by sacrificing the other carrion feeder immediately. I think I can wait on that, because, like, throwing a village rights or a deadly dispute or something would be pretty reasonable. All right, what do you got? Another Axebane Guardian. So opponent has a ton of mana here. So this is, like, we're going to see them kind of pop off. Oh, they, uh, well, not... That's probably not the pop-off that they wanted. All right, so there's the Jaspara Sentinel they drew. Is that it? That's it. Uh, that's unfortunate. This is not a basic swamp, so I can't play my Thorn of the Black Rose this turn. 
Uh, so I think I'm going to attack with all three creatures. And if my opponent blocks the small carrion feeder with this, I'll just sacrifice it to the other one. Yeah. And then get in more actual damage. This puts opponent to six. They've got some chump blockers. Um, but it's getting very close to the point where either one of these cards is going to be lethal amounts of damage. All right. Let's see if their winding way goes better. Okay. So they can transmute Drift of Phantasms, which I imagine allows them to get something that lets them go infinite. Yeah, that does allow them to get freed from the real. Okay. Um, I'm going to F6 here, and we'll see what my opponent can do. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know how much more gas they have left in the tank, but they can do this whole song and dance and net some mana. I'll, I'll let you know when they do something again. All right, they are transmuting another Drift of Phantasms. That is a Valakut Invoker. Um, that is an infinite on board. And seeing as my opponent has 20 minutes left on clock, uh, I am going to go ahead and concede to that rather than make them click through it. All right, cool. Um, I think I'm more or less good with where things are at. Um, do I want the, like, these effects to be better at answering Quarian Ranger? One, one of those is probably better than a Pit Keeper. Um, given where the clock is at now, I'll just do that. I'll something like that good. I could play one right of consumption. No, I'm back at six. Uh, yeah, let's play one right of consumption over one fangs. Like, chump, chump blockers are real. I want the second one. And I have, like, rights and wedding invitations to get in for damage. I think that's reasonable. Maybe go down one deadly dispute for being slow. Like, I, I am absolutely the beat down here in terms of roll. No. Like, why? Uh, on five, I probably have to keep this. Um, throw back two lands. Um, that's, this is super unfortunate, though. Oh my god, my opponent has gone to four cards. I think I'm going to lead on Serrated Scorpion. And then kind of like hide the shambling gas in hand in case my opponent plays like like Aquarian Ranger that I can just ping with it. Um, but like in terms of being the beatdown, this is not it. All right, let's let let's do it. Uh, this hand isn't great. I have a draw two, and my opponent Mulligan into Oblivion. Uh, all right, that is a one three. Um, that is going to halt my movement for the time being. Um, so let's go ahead. And attack. We will see if my opponent blocks. I assume they do. Oh. Assumption wrong. Uh, so I will play a Shambling Ghast and hold up Village Rights. I will almost certainly Village Rights at the end of my opponent's turn. Uh, but I'm really hoping to get something like Aquarian Ranger in process. Yep. And let's see what you can do with that mana in Overgrown Battlement. Absolutely. That's a hell of a combo. So, is the Orochi Leaf Caller better than Quarian Ranger? No. Don't think so. Let's Shambling Ghast. Kill the Quarian Ranger. Okay. There's a Carrion Feeder. I also just have a removal spell. Uh, let's play this out. Uh, I'm going to attack for my 1. Put my opponent to 18. I don't think my opponent is going to block with this, given how careful they've been and how many like points of damage I've gotten through. I think I'm just going to take out this creature right now. It, it just did so much work last turn, especially like with Quarian Ranger as a draw. And next turn, I'll kind of have like the choice of whether or not I'm like using a village rights or whether or not I'm sacking this thing to carry and feeder. Um, I'm going to want to village rights it. Can I sneak in those points of damage with Karen Feeder? I think so. I don't think my opponent can get rid of this creature right now on this board. This is greedy on my end. Um, but I think it works. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Get that one point of damage in. Uh, village rights away this scorpion. Burn my opponent for two. We're just trying to hit the land drop for the thorn for next turn. Um, 
because in like the worlds where my opponent it like is sitting on cards stuck in hand like becoming the monarch is going to be excellent okay that's a winding way let's see how good it is uh what is this that's a drift of phantasms a protection from black spell okay cool uh, opponents like that was a draw two for my opponent oh they're they're thinking about getting saucy in combat i will not block if they attack okay do i just kill this creature probably just kill that creature right my opponent only has two mana right now so they can filter that into white and then play this protection from black creature or i can just kill this i guess i can attack first right i don't like it would be actively good if my opponent traded yeah let's attack first but i think if i attack my opponent trades and then i play thorn it's just very good for me all right two damage in let's get that creature out of the way and we can wait on playing thorn like thorn becomes very good if this thing gets into play okay cool um so i will only get in a single point of damage here that's fine uh, again the since my opponent is stumbling i don't need to go at like a break neck pace or anything i can just go ahead and play thorn here become the monarch and then like bury my opponent in cards that way and i don't need that many cards for things to just become absolutely ridiculous right because i have just multiple carrion feeders in play um let's just play out a pair of creatures here i'll go ahead and attack with everything right, my opponent does no blocks i'm better off sacrificing things to blood throne vampires fine i'll just take that amount of damage i'm not really looking for more cards here i just want like a nested shambler or something that's good to sacrifice okay that's another overgrown battlement that's fine yeah that's this is exactly the sort of card i'm looking for all right so let's play a wedding invitation that cantrips yeah so that was going to make an un unblockable blood throne vampire uh, which was also going to get lifelink and then i was going to do uh, some very gross sacrificing things that's not the deck list this is the deck list uh overall thoughts on the deck list i like this general strategy I don't think I nailed it in terms of adjustments to the deck list. So I am happy with a lot of the things that I added to the deck, but without playing more games, I don't know that I have the ratios of cards correct. Um, so for example, like we have cards that fit like three or four category types here. So like these, actually, let me just get everything sorted. Okay, so these are all my things that sacrifice creatures. I have 17 of them. These are the creatures that I actually want to sacrifice. I only have 10 of those. And then these are the things that super pay me off for sacrificing creatures. Uh, now there's some overlap between these categories, right? Like carry and feeder is a sacrifice outlet as well as kind of a payoff card. But I'm kind of lightest on actual payoff cards. Um, and I'm not, like, super counting Bloodthrown Vampire as a payoff card, because uh, in this league, we actually didn't just, like, get in with a giant Bloodthrown Vampire all that many times, right? It was much more common that I built up, like, a Beetle and a Carrion Feeder and whittled down my opponent's resources, rather than being just, like, an all-in uh, combo deck with a Bloodthrown Vampire finish. Like, this is this deck's a tog. Uh, it, it, it works sometimes, but I didn't actually assemble that all that often. So I feel like if I were going to play this again, I would want to splash the red so that I could get another Mortician Beetle effect. And I think I'd go down on some of this stuff in an attempt to just have more creatures. Like, the Nameless Inversion interaction with Nested Shambler is really cool, and this, like, doubling as a removal spell is really cool. Um, I wonder how good that is versus just playing like two more shambling ghasts and a couple more other payoff cards so i wonder if like cutting two nameless inversions for two shambling ghasts then cutting like two hit keepers and the other two nameless inversions for like the red mortician beetle effect i wonder if that is just going to end up with a better deck um i really liked the lampad of death's vigil that i added to the deck like 
having a sacrifice win condition that does not enter the like does not involve combat is really good versus like the stoneheart dignitary and fog effects uh that are in the format um so i i liked that a lot that's like you're a tog slash uh disciple of the vault kill for this deck i liked that a lot i might even want to play more of those um i do wish i had a little bit more removal for like the fairies and if if that last round was elves instead of walls like i very much would have liked that um the other thing i'll say here is i think that this sort of deck is going to be more intuitive after you've played a couple of leagues like i i feel like i had the swing of things by the end but like i was still eating up a lot of clock relative to my opponent and that's that's not usually the case or at least not by like this order of magnitude um i i am unsure where i stand about this whole like vault of whisper which is cottage thing like, I think the Witch's Cottage doesn't belong in the deck if you're trying to play the Vault of Whispers so that your deadly disputes can sacrifice it come late game. Like, I think Witch's Cottage won me a game for being able to return, like, a Nested Shambler and, like, get me those last couple of points of damage. Um, But I don't, I don't, I don't know. This might be a little too greedy, like, with playing the Baron Moors and the Vaults and the Witch's Cottage um yeah i think that's all i have to say uh, anyway folks i hope you enjoyed if you did please click the like button on your way out if you end up wanting to mess around with this deck list or get one of your own decks on the channel that information is available in the video description have a great rest of the day see ya